Imad Pastorandi Skeet uses an argument that we hear and uh, that is made by many pastors. Um, and that being the argument found in Matthew 3, where we find the baptism of Jesus. And yeah, it is, it is clear that uh, Jesus obviously is, in, is, is baptized is with John in the water and in the, the spirit of God um, comes down and rests upon him as a dove. And then there's the voice. And so what we hear time and time again is you see there is evidence of the Trinity because we three are mentioned. So is Pastor Ski correct to, to assume that this must be proof of uh, the Trinity and um, all the others who believe like he does on this, are they on, are they spot on when, when they use this as proof for the Trinity or is there more to it? Please share uh, your, third, your thoughts as it pertains to the word of God. Okay, thank you, Virgil. Let me <clears throat> play the video and then we'll, uh, we'll get into it. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now let's look at it microscopically. And I ask God to continue to be with this session. Please, in the name of Jesus. Where was Jesus? In the water. He was coming out. In what direction was the dove traveling? He was up there. So we have two different beings. Where does the dove sit? On the shoulder, stem on the shoulder of Jesus. The voice we hear, where does it come from? Where above. So we have someone coming down. Now, the spirit can take any form. Remember in Acts 2, there were cloven tongues like as a fire. That's divine power, you see. We don't understand that. The spirit came down sat on Christ who was coming out of the water. And a voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We have Father, we have Son, we have Holy Ghost. Okay, so as you can see, uh, Pastor Randy Skeet, like many other pastors and theologians, they quote this verse, this, this passage of the baptism of Jesus. And what Pastor Randy does, he dissects it. He takes it slow. And, you know, Jesus was on earth and the spirit is coming down. You see, this is a different person. It's a different person altogether. And, and the father speaking from heaven. So there you go. You have a father and you have a son and you have a spirit. Case closed up. Uh, case closed type of thing. You know, it must be the Trinity. And I know that he gives a couple other verses. We will deal with them. But, but uh, first of all, allow me to highlight something from here. Now, the Bible says, and Pastor Randley rightly quoted it, that the spirit of God descended like a dove on Jesus, right? Now, Pastor Skeet highlighted that the spirit is coming from up down to show you that it's a separate person and, and God's speaking from heaven, right? But what, what Pastor Randy didn't highlight is the words spirit of God. Now, I, I agree with Pastor Randy that this, this passage highlights and, and the Bible clearly highlights that there is a father, there is a son, and there is a spirit, right? No one who reads the Bible can deny that. But here's a question for you. When you read this text, allow me to share this text with you. Um, I want to read it for you, and I want you to think what do you understand from it. Uh, here we go. Share. Okay. So in Genesis chapter 45, I mean, there's many of them, but I just, for some reason, I picked up, picked this, uh, this text. It says, and they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father revived. So question, who was it that revived? Was it Jacob that was revived or someone else called the spirit of Jacob, right? Now, there's many examples in the scriptures to that end. The spirit of Nebuchadnezzar and the spirit of the dead lady came back into her and many, right? <clears throat> as, as you all would agree with me that it was Jacob, not someone else called the spirit of Jacob. Through the whole Bible, we read many examples like that. The spirit of a person 
is the person themselves. We never understand the spirit of a person to refer to someone else other than themselves. Now, what happened at the baptism of Jesus was a fulfillment of what God prophesied in Isaiah. Let me highlight the verses for you. Okay, in Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1, we read, And the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings and so forth. Jesus quoted this, uh, th these words after the wilderness experience in Luke chapter 4. They, they, they were a direct fulfillment of the prophecy of the Old Testament that the Spirit of God will come upon Christ. In Isaiah chapter 11, the same thing. And verse 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, and so forth. In chapter 42 of the same, we read in verse 1, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. To any honest reader, it is a very simple and plain fact. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Lord. It is his own spirit and not someone else called God the Holy Spirit. Many people uh, uh, falsely believe that the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost are proper names. They are not. They actually describe whose spirit it is and what kind of spirit it is. It belongs to the Lord and it is holy because it belongs to someone who is holy. That is why uh, uh, Jesus was able to say, let me pull the text here for you in John chapter 10. And verse 37 and 38, he says, If I do not the works of who? My father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know that, that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. So who was in Christ? The, and in the baptism, we see the Holy Spirit coming in Christ, the, uh, on Christ. That is true. But who was that? That wasn't someone else called God, the Holy Spirit. That was the Father. That was the Spirit of the Father. He says, the Father is in me. Right? So how was the Father in Christ? The answer is found in, in, in the baptism and, of course, in the prophecies in the Old Testament and, and so forth. And it's in the same way that Jesus is in the believer through his Spirit. We'll look uh, more in, in, uh, in, in the coming videos, but it, it's a very simple principle. When you read the term, the spirit of, what the author is trying to tell you is that it is the spirit of whoever mentions next. If it's the spirit of Jacob, well, guess what? It's not a person, someone else, a friend of Jacob called the spirit of Jacob. No, it is the spirit of Jacob, the person of Jacob. It is Jacob himself on the inside, his life. When the Bible says the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar, the same thing. When the Bible says that, uh, the spirit of Jesus, Jesus commended his spirit into the father's hand. It's his own person, his own life. When the Bible says the spirit of God descended like a dove there was no dove by the way it descended like a dove descends right uh, it is the spirit of god who's god he's the father of christ that's why jesus can say the father is in me why because his spirit is in me it, it, it is that simple it doesn't have to be complicated right so I'll, I'll i'll just leave it at that i think it's it's very simple we've dealt with this text in the past but we thought uh, it is important to mention it again. Uh, I hope it is uh, clear enough for you.